Hey everybody, it's Pal Drew again, and sorry I cut off the previous episode so quickly. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just screwed up. But, um, this is pretty much a wrap up. I'm not going to go for another 20 minutes on this. Um, Paladin does show up, and he doesn't even merit comp uh, a blurb on the cover. Uh, I mentioned this before, I think. Luke McDonald, Brett Breeding, and new kid in town, Peter David, who was the marketing director or some such, uh, much like uh, Kurt Busiek, who like, graduated to writing, uh, became fan favorites. Well, Spider-Man's on the, uh, got a reason to be suspicious of this guy, and he finds out it's Paladin, who they met in Marvel Team Up. So they have the usual you know, Marvel fight. And I love how in the movies they kind of follow up on that kind of stuff. So meanwhile, uh, Janet Van Dyke, a.k.a. the Wasp, is just strutting her stuff on, uh, I think it's Central Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really great shot. And Brett Breeding did a real good finishing job on this. Well, Paladin's going after her. He goes, uh, my name's Paladin, sweet thing. <laughs> and I'll make sure you remember it. Janet, no time to explain. Just make this look good. Not that good. <laughs> so somebody help her? Help her? I got five bucks riding on her. What's the matter, Jan? Ticklish? Paul, for pity's sake, my nails, honestly, you weren't this tacky the first time we met. Which was Avengers 262 or something? I don't, 251. No recollection of that. I have no recollection. So they're faking a skirmish for public consumption for a reason, not just to be like, uh, not to be a TikTok character. <laughs> and, uh, well, that would be kind of fun. That is an excellent shot. Um, gets out of her clothes. She ends up in a negligee. Where'd you go? Right here, silly. Why do you think I'm called the Wonderful Wasp? Because you're a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant? Well, yeah, there's that, but mainly because I'm wasp size. Uh, winged when I shrink. But that's just the funniest thing ever. Uh, let us go to uh, Todd McFarlane and David Michelini. Uh, they did several years worth of Spider Man, and McFarlane did the Hulk with Peter David. And McFarlane's Hulk was so amazing. I actually like that better because. He, the Hulk was so misshapen and gross and uh, uh, you know, not, not a nice guy either uh, because he had... It's a long story. If you're a big comics fan, you'll know. Well, this is the Epic Collection, uh, Assassination. Um, I, I don't know if this is out of print or it may be, it may be reprinted. It's been... McFarlane's stuff's been reprinted in a huge variety of formats, like Omnibus or Spider-Man by uh, McFarlane. Well, after being ignored in the 80s, Paladin comes back. Actually, this is like 1988 or, 80, or 89, but you know what I'm saying. Really nice stuff, and Paladin did, did get a, a color uh, upgrade, and, you know, I do love it. You know, I think it's just my my uh, affection for the original issues of Paladin uh, kind of stick with me. But, you know, that sort of helps sell him a little bit more to modern, more modern, uh, more modern artists. Artists? Ugh. I just woke up a little while ago, so that's why, you know, English is now my second language. And uh, McFarlane really goes to town. Wow, it's almost the same pose as uh, uh, the ad... Adjectiveless Spider Man number one. I don't suppose you'd consider giving up with, without a fight, would you? I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> so, let me get at it. I love this panel. And they basically make him cool. Sort of for the first time. Boy, oh boy. I would love to own that splash page. And everybody would be like, who's this guy? I said, I'll just say he's a pal of mine. Paladin. Takes off. I love That was so wild how McFarlane did that Spider-Man. 
And, you know, there's various fans who like or don't like him. Turns out Paladin is working for Silver Sable. Um, almost everybody ends up working for her if they're, uh, you know, freelancers or whatever. Like Sandman uh, joined when he reformed as a hero. And uh, on sale twice a month. On sale twice a month. Oh, shush pups. Well, um, I love this cover, too. Uh, I was hoping they'd do more with Paladin, but I guess there's just not a huge call for it. Um, okay, as I was saying, early October, McFarlane was doing two books a month. Uh, Mark Silvestri was doing two issues of X-Men a month. Uh, Ron Lim was doing two Captain Americas a, a month. And that's just it's so weird to think about it in the modern day where deadlines are just, you know, they're just, I don't know. <laughs> they're not as strident by deadlines as they used to be. And uh, I love that. Rick Parker on the letters. Letter were so distinctive, so great. It's just amazing. I mean, I like, you know, I like people who do, oh, there's that title is incredible as well. I mean, I love the letterers who would just come up with something new or something that would fit the subject matter of the title. Uh, well, that's it for now, but uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, they they did make Paladin kind of cool, but after this, I don't honestly know where he's shown up because there have been, especially with the 90s coming out, uh, come around the bend, and there were so many titles out that, uh, you know, it, it, and even so, if they do it modern day, uh, continuity is pretty much dead, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, is this new Paladin really canon? I know I sound like a dork saying that. Um, but anyway, oh, I had to turn back the Paladin. Why am I showing that? Um, anyway, uh, if you liked my episodes, please hit like and subscribe, and please share uh, your comments. Uh, share my uh, channel to friends of yours who like comics of modern and, you know, early uh and also, please leave comments below. That would be wonderful, because uh, uh, YouTube likes that sort of thing for some reason. So we got to fight that evil, evil algorithm, baby. So we're in this together, uh, sort of. <laughs> um, and I take no money from uh, advertisers. I just do this uh, for fun. And uh, so I will talk to you all later.